Hey everyone, and welcome to the Car Market Feature Match. I'm Harry, joined here by Carl. And this time, we're not in the place we usually are, because as you've known, for the last month, we've been begging you to help us get to 10,000 subs, and we got there, and we promised you two views a week. So what I did is I flew over to England, we set up this new studio in our own MTG Taverns studio, and from here, we'll be able to deliver a second match of Paper Modern every week. But this week, we've got a special treat. Yeah, so we're gonna be playing no ban list modern this week. For those who aren't familiar with the format, it's essentially modern, but every banned card is unbanned. So we're gonna be playing with full degenerate decks and it's gonna be insane. I'm really excited to see what oh, you're playing. I am so stoked. But don't forget, leave your deck list for next week in the comments and sub while you're there. Half of you guys are not sub, it costs you nothing, but let's let's go play some no ban list. I just can't wait, I can't wait, let's get into it. Let's do it. So today I'm playing Blue White Miracles in No Ban List Modern. I decided this would be the perfect list since obviously I'm a huge control fanatic, but also the most recent No Ban List Modern tournament on Magic Online was won by Blue White Control or Blue White Miracles. So the point of this Blue White list is we've loaded it up with a load of banned blue cards. We've got Mental Misstep, Ponder, Preordain, Dig Through Time, and also Sensei's Divining Top. Now with this blue white list, we're looking to assemble the combo of Sensei's Divining Top and Counterbalance. Obviously Counterbalance, we're flipping the top card of our library, so if we can, tr can, so if we can control that top card, then we can counter any spell that our opponents can play. Then we have Mystic Sanctuary as well. There is the interaction where you can fetch Mystic Sanctuary in response to the Counterbalance trigger to put the card on top, but that's also just there so that we can put a really good value spell on top of the deck to redraw it and recast it. The rest of the deck is quite linear. We have Monastery Mentor and Jace the Mind Sculptor to win the game, just like a classic blue-white control deck in Modern right now. So there's not too much of a difference, but we're looking to just cast a load of banned cards and control the board. All right, no ban list Modern. I am very excited. And the deck I'm bringing to the table this week, just, oh, it pulls on my heartstrings. The first Modern Pro Tour had this one deck, Infect, played by Sam Black, which had a card that it was insta ban afterwards and we never got to see it was Blazing Shoal. What you do is if you cast Blazing Shoal and exile any nine mana spell, you can give for free one of your creatures plus nine plus zero until end of turn. Now with Infect, all you need to do is deal 10 Infect damage to your opponent and you win the game. Nine plus any one power on your Infect creature means you auto win and since it's free, you get to keep mana as a backup to protect your creature. So all we need to do, if all goes well, is hit Harry once. We wouldn't come to no Banless Modern just to play one bad modern card. So we're playing a whole support cast that's gonna help protect our creature and fetch our combo. We're playing Ponder, we're playing Preordain, we're playing Mental Misstep to counter his own mental missteps. And finally, we have Greenstone Zenith in the deck to just tutor any of our infect creatures whenever we need it. We're really excited to see how this plays out. Okay, Harry MTG, this is momentous. This is the first time we play against each other. Not only in Paper Magic, but in Magic in general. Yeah. So let's see your chops. Okay. Uh, also, no ban list. So let's see what Magic is like without any restrictions. Uh, ready to roll off? Mm hmm All right. <laughs> Feeling good already. Come on, let's go 12. Oh, that's so much less than 12. All right, so you're on the I would like to go first indeed. That makes sense. Not playing no lands dredge. So, ready? Yep. Let's draw. I'm gonna mull. I'm gonna keep. All right. I know that this hand has a land that does manage to cast my Glistener Elf, but all the other spells in my hand are blue. And if I do top deck a blue spell, I can start digging, I can hella dig. I've, I've got all the really good powerful blue cards and I can also even cast Mist Up for free. But if I don't draw a blue source, I'm just hitting him for one every turn with my Glistener Elf and I'm pretty sure Harry is playing a lot of removal. If not, he's not called Harry MTG. This hand's insane, I'm gonna keep it. There's not too much to get into, but I've got two islands and a ponder. So while yes, I do need white mana with this hand, I can ponder and just find that white source down the line. I also have two mental misstep to really help me if I do need to suppress the opponent to get time to find that white source. I've got prismatic ending to remove any problematic permanence. Doesn't even have to be a creature from the opponent because I am in the blind and also a Jace to win the game. This hand is perfect. Let's see what we got here. This is much better. I'm going to keep this. Okay, this hand is much better. I would like to keep the Ink Moth Nexus in hand because it's a creature that Harry can't interact with very easily in the early turns, but I do need the two colored manas to cast my spells and I already have the Glistener Elf. So we might be able to ride this Glistener Elf to victory with the other spells we have in hand. So we're gonna bottom the Ink Moth Nexus and give our so, luck. So, ready to go? Yep. Off to the races. Putting this card to the bottom. I'm going to... 
Take three, first blood, and you'll see why that's completely inconsequential. Oh, really? Because I'm going to get a breeding pool. Okay. And, are you ready, Harry? I'm ready. I'm gonna cast a Glistener Elf. Ooh. I guess, starting off this no bandless mono Oh I'm no, you have it! Life. All right, 18. It's a mental misstep. Goes to my graveyard, I'll pass the turn over to you. Okay, I will draw a card. Okay, I guess I will also pay to life because my life total doesn't matter if you're dealing me infect damage and I will cast Ponder. All right, that resolves. So I look at the top three cards. Hmm. Not really sure that's what I'm looking for. There's one nice spell here, but I just can't take two dead draws with one nice spell, so I guess I will shuffle. And I draw from Ponder. Yeah, of course. From there, my turn's over. Go ahead. I'll untap. Draw for turn. I see your Ponder. I'll raise you a Ponder. Sure. Look at the top three cards. All right, this is good. Um, but I can only draw one. Hmm. Yes. I'll put these three on top. Yeah. I'll draw one. Mm-hmm. And then this is really unfortunate because they're all good by one on one. I'm gonna fetch. Yep. I'll get another breeding pool untapped. Okay. But in my deck, it knows what I want. I'm gonna ponder. Sure. Uh, this is also really good Harry MTG, so I'm going to keep this on top in this manner. Again. I'm gonna draw. Didn't Carl say he liked that ponder? He just used Windswept Teeth to fetch away the top two cards of his library. And now he's cast another ponder saying he likes those cards as well. I'm starting to doubt him. I think he's doing some psychology with me. Yeah, what Harry doesn't know is I just like every ponder I can. So go ahead. Okay, I'll untap, I will draw. Hmm. Okay, he's tapped out. I've got a mental misstep back up. Let's tap out for counterbalance right now and put the shields down. I think it's completely fine. I think with you taking the turn off to cantrip, I'm just gonna play my land and play a counterbalance. Harry MTG. Do Mr. and Mrs. MTG know you're playing counterbalance? How do they feel about their son right now? Yeah, that resolves. Awesome. Okay, well then I guess it's your go. I'll untap. Draw for turn. So this is basically Mishra's Bobble, because I'm gonna check the top card of your library. Okay. By Ooh. attending the cat of uh, Blighten Agent. I do have a What trigger. you got? Oh, 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 oh. Um, all right. I know about path. And I'll pass the turn over to you. Okay, that is pretty scary. Ah, you got a path, you're fine. Guess we'll untap and we will draw that path to exile. Okay, so here I have an interesting decision. I've got both path to exile and prismatic ending in my hand, but only two mana available. I now have to decide if I want to tap out for prismatic ending or just path to exile. I'm still a bit scared of Force Negation and I know I have a one drop on top of my deck. So I'm just gonna Path to Exile and if there is a Force Negation in my opponent's hand, then I'm just gonna spin my top and hope to hit a three on top myself. Okay, here I'm going to play my land and I'm going to try and assemble the two card combo and cast Sensei's Divining Top. Oh, that's a good two card combo. So you play a band card, I'm gonna play a band card as well. Go ahead and Mental Misstep that. Okay, so you get a 12 life. I guess I have a Counterbalance Trigger response. Come on! <laughs> top on top yeah, of this deck. gun. So that gets countered. And I guess my top resolves? Yes. Okay, well then I guess I am going to... I think here I'm just gonna play it safe and sorcery speed path to exile your blind That's agent. That's a safe bet. Uh, we can start digging for a threat here, but it's gonna be really hard to get around that counterbalance, considering the fact that most of our spells cost one and two. It might be the time to crack out the board encounters. Well... That was kind of nuts for me. I guess that's all I can do. It's your go. Harry, that was wild. <laughs> <laughs> it's turn three and you already have the top combo assembled. You know, Harry? Yeah. You get to play magic again. It's your turn. Really? Okay, I guess on your end step, I will activate Sensei's Divining Top. Okay. I will put them back like this. Okay, well, I guess I will just untap and take my turn. Um... Okay, so I guess I will play my Flooded Strand and Fetch. Going down to 13. Oh! Enters the battlefield untapped. And I will play the signature card. Oh no, don't you dare! <laughs> All right. It resolves. 
Oh, your side of the board is looking so painful for me right now. I guess now I will brainstorm with Jace. Those are some nice Magic the Gathering cards. I guess I will just put these two back and uh, I will say go. Okay, I'll draft her. Have you heard about the board encounters? <laughs> I have not. You have not. So there's this one thing we do sometimes at the hard market feature match. Uh, if you're playing against a deck that uh -huh. wins very slowly, yeah. you know how ideal infect counters and when you get to 10, you die? Well, now I can also infect myself board encounters. <laughs> and when I get to three, I lose the game. But you can't oh, give me board yeah. encounters. Only I can give myself board encounters by being bored by you. <laughs> okay? So I would I like mean, to- I I'm having fun over here. <laughs> it's a little one-sided. You know this card was bad for being boring, right? <laughs> okay, so I would like to. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not committing uh, whatever the samurai is you right now. I'm just. I'll just take one board encounter, okay. just like a, a taster. Okay. 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 So, one board encounter. You got it. And hoping I get to see what you're playing with, I would like to cast a probe. Well, I have a counterbalance trigger and reveal ponder. <laughs> So you, Harry. I would like to cast. I would like to afflict myself a second board encounter, <laughs> just in spite. Okay. Uh, okay. Second board encounter, that's countered, and yep. I will pass the turn over to you. Okay. I will untap and I will draw that ponder, and I guess now I will start to win the game, and I will plus my Jace the Mind Sculptor on you. Who do you want to face? On oh, me? Yeah. Uh, that's a problem, so I guess I'll put that on the bottom. I see on top of my opponent's library an Ink Moth Nexus with Jace. This card is the card that will get them back into the game. Let's put that to the bottom and hope they don't top deck another one. Okay, after plusing Jace, I guess I'm gonna play my land for turn and I'll cast this Ponder that you know about. Yep. Okay, I do like the look of all of these. I guess I will put them back in that order and right. draw this card. Now, I will tap two mana and cast another counterbalance. So here I essentially have the world. With two counterbalances, I can use the first trigger to see the top card of my library, and then I can activate Sensei's Divining Top, I can fetch to shuffle it away, and then I can use the second counterbalance trigger to actually counter the card. So having a second counterbalance on the board here essentially gives me an extra scry to help me counter my opponent's stuff. Okay, I guess with that, uh, it's your go. Okay, I will untap. Yep. I will draw. Harry? Right. I had myself my third border counter. Oh. Game two. I, there's no way out of this. I have no way out of this. All right, let's okay. go to sideboards. Good game. Really? Is control that boring? Yes, I mean, it is. But I'm having fun. Okay, post board. I'm bringing in Viridian Corruptor because I'm assuming Harry will bring in engineered explosives here, and that can just nag an engineered explosives or force him to crack it at a time that's not ideal for him. Also, it costs three mana, so it's a little more difficult for him to hit it with a prismatic ending. Then I'm also bringing in not all of my spell skites, but two spell skites. He does have Terminus, which is a border wipe. So I, I can't just rely on spell skite too much, but it will give me those turns where I can just attack for a lethal and his path to exile will just be useless. Also, if he prismatic endings for one, I can redirect the spell skite and the prismatic ending just fizzles. The things I don't need, I'm bringing out one Blazing Shoal and one Blasphemous Act because sometimes if he just counterspells my combo, I'm two cards down. And he will be probably playing Force of Negation. So I'm bringing out two of the cards of the combo, but still leaving them two in. I do need to be able to threaten that sometimes. Also, I'm just bringing out one of the Peer Through Depths because I'm not gonna be leaving mana up that much often. It is a grindy game, but he has a lot of removal, so the grindiness is a little bit different. And I'd rather have the Ponders or Preordains because sometimes I'm just gonna be digging for creatures or an Ink Moth Nexus and Pierce Through Depths doesn't get any of those. Okay, so with sideboarding, this matchup is all about speed and suppressing the opponent. I need to make sure that my opponent's board is always empty. So I'm looking to take out every expensive card in my deck. Don't forget, everything that the Infect player plays is either zero or one mana, so we need to make sure that we can always have an answer for whatever they're casting. So in this case, I'm gonna be taking out all my Jaces, my counter spells, and my Dig Through Times. Counter spell I'm taking out because it's too expensive for what the opponent is doing. I don't wanna be trading down on mana, and I don't wanna feel like I have to hold up mana. Don't forget, I play Sorcery Speed Removal like Terminus and Prismatic Ending, so I'm gonna be tapping up mostly on my turn. We're boarding in two Prismatic Ending, two Engineered Explosives, a Chalice the Void, and Monastery Mentor. We're bringing in all the removal spells because obviously we have to keep the board clear. We need to make sure that my opponent is not attacking with anything. We're bringing the Monastery Mentors because we are taking out Wind Conditions in Jace, 
It produces blockers for some of their creatures, but they do have Ink Moth and Blighted Agent, so it's more so a cheaper win condition. We're bringing in Chalice of the Void because this is a fifth counterbalance. Putting Chalice of the Void on one suppresses a lot of their protection spells, so things like Blossoming Defense and Vines of Vastwood. You ready for game two? I'm ready. Okay, I'm going first, again. Yeah. But this time, no mulliganing. Okay. Well, unless I really need to. <laughs> yeah, Harry, I can't keep this. Same, same. All right, both down to six. Yeah. All right, this hand has some potential. I have one mana and I have a Glycerin Elf, and I have two pump spells. So I could go that route, but if he has a mental misstep on my Glycerin Elf, I'm in trouble. If he has a mental misstep on my Jetaxian Probe, I'm also out. So if his hand doesn't have a mental misstep, this is actually a pretty good hand. But if it just crumbles to one card, I, I don't think I want to keep it here. Ugh, this is not what I was looking to see. Mystic Sanctuary is a tap land. I don't have a cantrip. I don't have white mana for any of my removal spells. Let's ship it back. It's tempting, but if I never draw a white source, I lose. Um, I will keep this one, actually. I will keep as well. I will bottom this. This is a much better hand. I have Blighted Agent, and if he takes care of this, I have an Ink Moth Nexus. I have a Spell Pierce to protect them, and I have a spell skite, so I have two creatures, a creature and a backup creature, and then I have a lot of ways to protect them. I have half the combo in my hand. If I draw the combo, you can counterspell it, but I have a spell skate. There is a counter war, but I have two creatures. I'm feeling really confident. This hand is literally perfect. I thought I wasn't gonna get anything better than my game one hand, but this hand is really good. I've got a win condition, I've got a sensei's divining top, I've got a prismatic ending and a mental misstep, and two lands to go along with it. Let's bottom the planes because I don't want to flood out too much and let's just roll with this hand. I'll kick it off with a Misty Rainforest and pass the turn. Ooh, okay. It's a bit scary. I guess I will draw my card. Yep. Um, you do that. I guess here I will pay to life with Hollowed Fountain. Ooh. Go to 18. Then I will play a Sensei's Divining Top. I'm going to fish, go to 18. Okay. Uh, sorry, I'm going to go to 17. Sure. <laughs> what would, how would I go to 18 by fetching? I don't I think that's actually possible. <laughs> I'll get a breeding pool. Yeah. And I can't let that on the board. I'm going to pierce. So Harry playing top on turn one means he's not keeping path open. It means he probably has either kind of a slow hand and is looking for lands or he's looking for interaction, but it does mean he's in the business of digging most likely. So I kind of need to counter it here. It sucks to burn the spell pierce on this because I'd rather protect my creature. But if he has a bit of an iffy hand, this will slow down his development past his killing my first creature. Ooh, okay, that's that resolves. Shoot, I really didn't want Carl to have a counter spell here. When the Infect player just says land go, they obviously have a Blighted Agent or an Ink Moth Nexus in hand. I can't use this mental misstep to protect my Sensei's Defining Top while it is very tempting because I only have Prismatic Ending in my hand. That's Sorcery Speed Removal. I need to have protection so that when I try to exile their creature, I can fight back for any protection spells. Well, I guess from there, I'll just pass the turn. All right, I'll untap. Draw for turn. Mm -hmm. I would like to play a scary one, an Ink Moth Nexus. Ooh, okay. And double up on the threats. A Blighted Agent. Oh my. Okay. Any response? No responses. Pass the turn to you. I'll untap and I will draw. Okay, I guess I will fetch, go to 15 and get another Hollow Fountain. You didn't know I didn't side in four vaults. Come on with that damage. Yeah. Okay, from there, I guess I will spend a blue and a white mana to cast Prismatic Ending yep. on this Blighted Agent. Okay. Um. Yeah, that's about it for me, go ahead. Untap, draw. So it's easy to just play the Spell Skite here because the next turn I could attack with the Ink Moth and protect it, but the Ink Moth is just hidden for one. And if I ponder into a land, I can also look at the top cards in my library. So I get to still play the Spell Skite, but I get to see if I can stack one of my combo pieces on the top of my library so that I could finally get for lethal end with that Ink Moth. I don't know if a lot is going on in Harry's hand right now. Okay, I'll cast Ponder. Yeah, that's fine. I need one of these, but I can't keep this. Oh, I'm gonna okay. shuffle my deck. Sure. I hope the top of my library is pleasant to me. Sure. Draw. It's not. <laughs> I'll pass the turn. <laughs> You'll pass the turn, okay. Yep. I will untap, I will draw. Really? Another land? I've got nothing now. I've got to slam this Monastery Mentor and just hope they have nothing. I guess I will fetch with Flooded Strand and go to 14. Yes. Get a Basic Plains. With my Basic Plains and my two Hollowed Fountains, I will cast a Monastery Mentor. 
Oh, pulling out the big guns I see. I am gonna win the game somehow. And yeah, that's about gotta it. turn the corner. The I will untap, draw, and I'll just cast a spell skate. Okay. Pass the turn. Oh, I will untap and I will draw. It was a pretty good one. Oh no. So I guess I will play my land for turn yes. and I will pay two mana for a counterbalance. I've Oh, I'm triggers. not happy to see this. How do you have two triggers? Because I have a prowess trigger on the mentor. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I cast this and then I get a prowess trigger and a monk okay. to be made. Monk's over there. Is that resolved? Yes, it does. Nice. And I guess then I'll go to combat and mm -hmm. I will attack for three. So if you, what are you playing for instance, being counterspell and Path. If you have path, well, it's gonna get the spell sky anyways, and counter spell is not gonna. I'm gonna block. Okay, you call my bluff. You're oh. good. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm gonna attack. Yeah. I'll draw for turn. Yeah. Harry, I feel not confident in this attack, but we're gonna we're gonna go for this. I either win or lose the game in this turn. Really? Yeah. Oh my. I, I didn't come to. I didn't come play an infect to not live the risk. I'm going to activate Ikmoth Nexus, mm -hmm. declare attacks. Do you want to let me take one? No, I don't. I don't. I've got, I've got Blazing Shoal, uh -huh. exiling a world fire, um, which uh, adds plus nine plus zero to my Ikmoth Nexus. Well, I guess I should announce my counterbalance. Yeah, let's see what trigger. you got. Force of oh, negation. That been good here. Oh, if only that was in my hand. Well, sadly, I have uh, a mental misstep. <laughs> and I have an island, so I guess oh, no. I have to take the damage. Game right three! Now. All right. Let's go to game three. Okay, so before we get into the next game, we're going to take some time to thank Karma Crow for providing the cards for this video. Yeah, it's really important. Without Karma Crow, we would have no cards to play with. It would just be Harry and I staring at each other really awkwardly and rolling some dice. So thank God to Karma Crow that they're there. They have over 700,000 cards. So if you do want to buy cards for your next Commander deck, your FNM, if you go on their website, you only pay shipping once and they have so many cards, you're probably gonna all find them there. Now we left a link in the description to go onto their profile page if you wanna do some shopping, but I am really excited to see who wins this next game. I've got you, I've got you on my sites. Nah, I've got him, let's get into the next one. Ready for game three? I am. This is the big decider. The decider. In our first match against each other, this will set a precedence for any future match we have. Well, I like these first three cards already. Ooh, and I like the rest of them, so I think I'm gonna keep. Ah, oh, Harry. Okay, I'll keep as well. Awesome. Okay, this hand is really good. I've got a Path to Exile to remove any threats. I've got a Mental Misstep to snipe a Glistener Elf. I've got a Monastery Mentor to win the game. And hopefully if I draw some blue spells, I also have Force of Negation as an option. Let's keep this and hope that we can suppress their draw. So you go first. Okay, I'm gonna start off with a Misty Rainforest and say go. Good start. Classic modern start. I'll draw for turn. I'm going to play this I'll fetch, mm -hmm. get get a breeding pool. Mm -hmm. And cast a ponder. Ooh, that resolves. All right. This set things up very nicely. All your ponders seem to be the nuts. Okay, I'll put it like that, I'll uh -huh. draw. Sure. And I'll pass the turn. On your step, I'll fetch a tapped hollowed fountain, going to 19. Okay, I'll take my turn, I'll untap and I will draw. Perfect. Path to Exile is exactly what I was looking for. We have another removal spell so that if they do have a way to protect or counter any of my spells, we can just back it up with another path. That's a pretty good card. Oh no, we keep on drawing bangers. I'm gonna play a Flooded Strand and say go. All right. I'll draw for turn. So Harry is representing the card counter spell here. I would like to cast a Blighten Agent and start attacking with it, but I can't protect it as easily and I don't want to run into counter spell. I don't have any way around it. So what I'd rather do is keep up my own counter magic, first maybe not to play into anything. And then if he doesn't cast anything, we've got fear through depths. If he does cast any, something, we have a counter spell. And if anything, next turn, we just untap, play our Blighten Agent and have mana up to protect it. Harry, let's, let's take things slow. 
It's your turn. Oh, okay. So I guess I'm going to fetch another tapped hollow yep. fountain. Going to 18. It's what you do. Okay, I will untap, mm -hmm. draw for my turn. This is literally the perfect draw. Now I can slam Monastery Mentor and have Force of Negation to pitch this blue ponder that I drew and have Mental Mist up as well. The board is clear, let's get this Mentor down and let's have extra protection so that we can fight over whatever the opponent can do. Guess here we're just going to fetch a basic island going to... 17. 16. 17. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. You just fetched three times, but. Yeah, I looked at your life toll from last yeah. time. Actually. Okay. So I'm going to get a basic island. I'm going to play around Spell Pierce. So instead of playing a non creature, I guess I'll just try and oh, play no, a creature just gonna threat. Jam the Monastery Mentor. That's good. And I'll play a Mentor. The result? Yeah, it does. It does. Then it's your turn. I'll end of turn, pure three deaths. Ooh, okay. I'm gonna reveal a Blazing Shawl. Okay, that's a pretty good one. It's not bad. All on top? Mm hmm. Draw for turn. Well, if you have a misstep, at least we'll see. I'm going to pay two life to look what's cooking in your hand. I have a mental misstep. A <laughs> ponder, a force of negation, path to exile, path to exile. Oh my god, Harry! <laughs> Good luck. Oof, that's gonna be a lot of Monastery Mentor triggers. I'll draw for a probe? Yeah. I think I'm about to make a lot of monks. So off my turn, I will cast Ponder. I have two triggers. Yep. Those all seem pretty good. Um, I guess I will stack them like that and draw a card and play a land. <laughs> I will then... Oops. I will then cast Path to Exile targeting Blighted Agent and I have three triggers. Yes. So I get another monk. And this is currently a 4-4. Four four. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're going to create quite the stack here, which is going to overpopulate the board with monks. Uh-oh. I'm going to pay two life. Yep. And I'm going to mental misstep your path to exile. Um, okay, we'll obviously have to fight over that, so I guess I will also pay two life. 15. 15. But alongside my mental misstep, I get another monk. Oh, and yeah. And a load of prowess. And then this guy's growing. <laughs> I guess these have summoning sickness. Yeah, they, they, they they're inconsequential, but this guy's getting beefy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this will resolve, countering this, and then I would like to cast Vines of Vastwood on my Blighted Agent. Okay, well, I guess... Um... Okay, well, there's only one logical thing I can do, and I will then Path to Exile the Blighted Agent response, and I have another set... Yeah, another trigger, yes. ...of a million triggers. So I will now let this resolve. Mm -hmm. This will be exiled. I'll fetch a basic. Yep. Basic island would enter the battlefield. This fizzles. And this is a 6-6. Six, six. Yes. Okay, I guess from there I'll just attack you for six. Take six. Go to seven. And uh, not really much else I can do here, so I guess I'll pass the turn. Even if they play blocker, you just ponder an eight power on the board. <laughs> Darn it. I just drew what I wanted. If I had... Yeah, if if one of these was an Igmoth Nexus, I would win. But now I believe... I'll play this Radiant Corruptor. Mm -hmm. Not targeting any artifacts, and let let the monk wave wash over me. I will uh, fetch on your end step here to 14. Yep. And I will get a banned magic card. We've been playing a lot of banned magic cards. A very nice banned magic card, Mystic Sanctuary, and my trigger will target Path to Exile. Yep. 
So path regularly goes on top of my deck. Yes, it does. And I'll take my turn. Yes. I'll untap and I'll draw the path to exile. And I guess I will cast the path to exile targeting your creature. Would you like five prowess triggers? I would, and I would also like an extra monk. <laughs> um, we don't have any, so I'll just let you swing in for the little bear. <laughs> yeah. We ran out of monks. <laughs> Can I preordain first to ask for another monk in triggers? Yeah, but I'm not going to be able to supply <laughs> you with any more monks. <laughs> We're out of order. Boom, let's go. Um, do you want to just count the damage? Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That's 16, so you get a negative 11. Good games. Oh my god, Harry MTG, that's so many monks! I hope you have a monastery to put all those monks! What I, are you gonna do with them? I love Monastery Mentor, it's in the blood. I'm a blue light control player at heart, that's all I can say. Classic, yeah. Listen, if you enjoyed this video, please, you can click here, sub. I know we got to 10K, but we put a lot of effort into these videos, so it really helps us out and it costs you nothing. And while you're there, please comment the deck list you want to see next week. Either regular modern or no bandless modern or even whatever wacky format you can think of. We will consider it and we do read all the comments. But in the meantime... Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate it. I guess we'll catch you guys in the next one. See you next week.